I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to night four of the 2021 Chemnitz Hanukkah special. Jewish holidays go from sundown to sundown and so it always feels appropriate to reference our beautiful sun and light in the festival of lights that is Hanukkah and I'm really excited to show you what I've come up with for tonight. So let's go twist up some yarn and layer colors to create some beautiful sunset hues. Today I want to create a sunset inspired colorway, but I am really debating when it comes to picking the colors that I want to layer together. All I know for certain is that I want to include peach blush, but beyond that I'm not sure which yellow do I want sunflower yellow or brilliant? And then do I want a more golden? Um, and like tangelo leans a little bit pink. Do, what pink do I want? And is this orange too strong? Should I count on just the yellows and pinks layering? Or do I want to bring something that feels more orange in? These are the questions that I have. So I think that we're gonna start out today by doing a little bit of swatching of these powders plus a stock of some cherry bomb that I already have made up. Whenever I am using dry dye powder, I am always wearing a P100 respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, and all of the tools and equipment I am using are dedicated for dyeing yarn and aren't used for food. If you wanna learn more about some of my favorite tools, I do have links down in the video description. I am going to be layering these colors in liquid form. But I thought that by just taking a look at the color of the powders on a skein of Knit Picks Swish DK, which is 100% Superwash Merino, could help me narrow down some of these colors to try to get the hues that I want right. So that way, when I twist the skeins and layer the colors, I know which colors may be too similar or which might be a little more subtly different. So therefore where they layer on top of one another, that'll give us some of these beautiful blendings that you see when you're looking at the sunset. I always find this exercise really, really helpful. So color wise, we have brilliant yellow, sunflower yellow, golden poppy, honey mustard, peach blush, tangelo, Blazing Orange, this is Cherry Bomb, Flamingo Pink, Pink Orchid, and then Fire Engine Red. And so I'm going to go bring this to the stove to heat set it. Uh, I also will insert up a photo from my angle that is labeled that you can screenshot if you want to compare these colors. But what I feel right now is that, ooh, I'm not sure how different the tangelo and the flamingo pink are. I think that I like the flamingo pink and the softness, but we might be able to achieve something similar by using the cherry bomb, but using very, very little of the cherry bomb. And so I am leaning towards uh, cherry bomb, peach blush, golden poppy, and then brilliant yellow as the colors I want to combine to create the sunset type feel. The only orange I've picked, this golden poppy, is like a beautiful soft orange, but when we layer these yellows with some of the more pinks and the peach is a little bit on the pink side, that'll also bring more orange in because we are gonna be twisting these skeins, layering these co colors on, flipping or retwisting, and I think it'll be really fantastic. But let's go heat set this. This is still gonna heat for about 10 more minutes or so to set the color. I saw a little bit of dye powder that I just wanted to shake out. But I am feeling confident with my decision to use the peach blush for a little bit of pink. We're gonna use a hint of that uh, cherry bomb. We're gonna use the golden poppy and the brilliant yellow. And I think that those four colors will give us something that is both bright and has some like nice shifts of color because as we have our twisted skeins in the pan to dye them, I, I think it'll work really well. And actually, I really like this skein too. I like the little bits of white that are left. It's very like cloud-esque. 
Uh, I think that almost any of the colors could have worked really, really well. The blazing orange is probably a bit too intense, too orange, but, and then when it gets a little more pastel, it's a little bit more like that golden poppy anyway. The Tangelo is also a really, really good color, but it's a little bit too close to that peach blush, and I really, the peach blush was the one color I knew I wanted to use. Okay, I am going to flip this over, and we got a good amount of color on the other side. Uh... So like this is when I debate if we leave it. Oh yeah, okay. So first I'm like, ooh, there's all that white. But then if I look at where the colors are, there is still color there. Okay, I'm happy with that. I wanna add a little bit more water. Here's just, there were already two tablespoons of vinegar in here. Here's four cups of water and I am going to raise the temperature. We are on my stove across two burners and I'm gonna heat this for 15 more minutes with this increased water and then We'll come and remove it. I am going to, I just turned off the stove and I am going to remove this yarn so it can cool completely before I wash it. But oof, already, I mean, I could have used all of these colors and this would create something like what I wanted. So that's like a really, really good feeling. Um, and I shouldn't be afraid to go a little bit brighter. Now, I am bringing in a skein of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn, which you can see it's soaking up this liquid really quickly. Um, I am going to be using this as a yarn mop while I mix up my dye stocks. And along the way, if there's any spills or things, I will have this skein to help uh, mop things up. And already it has a tiny bit of color because maybe there was some along the edge here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and make up some stock solutions of these three colors off camera. Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and make up a half liter of them. So for each of the colors, I will measure out five grams of dye and then dissolve it in a total of 500 milliliters of liquid. That way we will know that there is one gram of dye in every 100 milliliters, so it'll be easy to calculate the amount of dye I want. Especially since the first round, we're gonna be doing a lot of feel and probably adjustments along the way to get the colors I want. I have pre-soaked all of our mini skein bundles for a couple of hours. Each of these zip ties represents 10 10 gram mini skeins of either Wool to Dye Force Platinum Sock or Platinum DK, both of which are 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. I've brought 400 grams of yarn over here. Now, our mini skein sets are a little bit more short than full skeins are. So as I twist it up, you can see, like I don't have to do as much scrunching as I might if this was a full skein. And what I have here are 400 grams total, and of that, 200 grams are fingering, and 200 grams are DK. Uh, we could do all one weight in a pan, but I thought it'd be fun to mix it up a little bit. And the thing is here is that <laughs> We probably could do five in the pan really, really easily. But what this is gonna do is it gives us a little bit more surface area for each of the colors because there's space between them. So when we pour the dye on, it can hit anywhere that is available, but likely will not hit the bottom, what's against the bottom, especially right now when there's not a lot of liquid, and it's not, there's some resist in the interior, but we have no acid in here yet. Therefore, with the first color, I am also in the probably four cups that we'll add at first. I have a feeling I might do eight cups total, but uh, this handy jar will be used, um, and so we'll see if I need to do a second layer. But we will start with two tablespoons of white vinegar in here. 
and I just added some water to here already and I want to start with the cherry bomb. We have 400 grams of yarn um, but any color we do will be a little bit more saturated right off uh, the bat just because we're not going to be adding it to the entire skein like when we layered colors. So right here I have 25 milliliters of this 1% stock of our Cherry Bomb. And I am going to rinse out the graduated cylinder and fill this up so we have a total volume of four cups. And again, this is not that much dye. It's only 0.25 grams of dye. But now we're gonna go and pour this over the yarn. You know what I wanna do? Let's start with just like half of this. Okay. Um, Cause I said I may end up wanting to do like eight cups of water total. So let's just start with half because we can always add more dye, but we cannot remove it. Um, and so now let's go add this onto the yarn. See, we're dying by feel today, but also creating a recipe. And so now I want to pour this on top of our yarn and see another reason why I decided to dilute it more and I'm very happy I did is it's going to let me spread this out further uh, because we have no water in here yet and we're going to want enough water and acid to turn things on. And by the time I finish adding all of this color, we will have added a total of eight cups of water and two tablespoons of white vinegar here on the yarn. And there's spots that are sticking out, spots that have more coverage and spots with less, and that is okay. I am going to turn on the heat and we're gonna heat this until we don't really see any color on the sides because it's possible that we're gonna have a little bit more pastel along the top and then a bit more pigmentation along the sides if more dye ends up going in over there. And so I wanna see where we're at before deciding if I wanna add more of this color. But since it's a red, that's why I went so light. With the other colors, I will likely be adding a lot more dye, uh, so that way we can have some more brightness on this colorway. I really enjoy this twisted effect uh, on the yarn and how it distributes the color. It's something I've been playing with a lot more lately. One thing I am really curious about is because this is a bundle of 10 mini skeins, when we twist, the minis have more opportunity to cross over each other or be tucked inside each other than a standard 100 gram skein of yarn might where there's a little more consistency with the order each time we open it up. So I am curious if, not that I'll necessarily be able to tell like a major difference, but I am curious to think about how that may factor in and that could be one reason why these colorways might end up feeling a little bit different than if I was doing this on full size skeins of yarn. But I'm really excited. It's been about 10 minutes. I'm gonna reduce the heat to low. And I am very happy with the color. I am curious, okay, we got a little more coverage towards the bottom than I expected. Actually, we got really, really good coverage with this pink overall. So I have just opened it up and I am re-twisting, which shows a lot of the same pink, but what re-twisting it is doing, am I twisting this the same way? No. <laughs> Maybe on one of them I'll even twist a different way, but this is going to redistribute uh, where the like deepest and lightest colors are and expose some areas uh, that have less color. Since there was not a lot of liquid at first and this, am I doing the right way? Yes. And the colors um, did not strike super, super fast. That means that 
uh, we got more coverage, and especially since things are hot now, we are likely, keep twisting the wrong way, we will likely get uh, faster, shallower coverage when we come in with our peach blush. Now I hope that this is going to feel different as I'm expecting. So now I have two tablespoons of white vinegar, 100 grams, there we go, of peach blush in four cups of water. And I'm starting at the end and trying to distribute this over a lot of the yarn. I have a feeling that this is gonna be fairly subtle and I may want to add some more. And I think I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, here is another 100 milliliters of peach blush, but in two more cups of water. We have therefore added a total of 200 milliliters of the peach blush acid dye in six cups of water with an additional two tablespoons of white vinegar. And I think on camera you can see that it is slightly more orange. I feel like each transition that I'm doing is going to be really, really subtle, but the difference between the yellow and the pink at the beginning is more extreme. So we'll see how this feels. There was less white left than I think I was expecting with that first color. So yeah, we'll, we'll see where we end up. And I mean, conceivably for the last step, I was planning to have things untwisted, but we'll see where we are with the colors. But I'll be back in 10 minutes. Okay, it has been 10 minutes and it is super subtle. And I think I want to twist this the other way this time. I sort of want to actually shake out the yarn a little bit more and then twist it the Oh, that's the same way. Let's try to twist it the opposite way just to see what we see. There we go. So I'm gonna open it up, remove some of the liquid, shake it out a little bit to distribute the yarn, and then we're gonna twist it this other way. And I know things are looking very pink right now, but since we're about to add the yellows, that will turn things more orange. And we still have some white in here, so I don't mind if we end up with white at all on the final colorway, but another choice is to take the brilliant yellow at the end and pour it on. Um, so that is also just a choice. Twist that up and I can always twist things tighter or looser. You can see now that we absolutely have a lot more water volume. And now I have 150 milliliters of, oh goodness, what is this, this yellow? 150 milliliters of golden poppy that I am trying to somewhat evenly pour over. But since we now have more, so much more liquid in here, that's helping me get it a little bit more distributed onto the yarn. Still a little bit less like towards some of the ends, but maybe, oh, that's something we should do. We should shift where the zip tie is located for the next round. And our yarn mop is seeing lots of color cleaning up as I go. I will probably steam set that before we do uh, more dyeing, but you can now see we've got the pinks and more oranges coming through, which is really, really fun. Uh, I'm very excited. And, and if we feel like, oh, it went too orange, I wish there was more pink, we can always come back with more pink. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna set a timer and we're gonna wait. Oh, I'm so excited with this already. There's still a little bit of some yellow, so I think I'm gonna give it five more minutes, but it's looking so cool. 
there's a tiny bit of yellow left, but since the next color we're about to add is yellow, <laughs> I'm not that worried. Uh, but let's see. Oh, this is so pretty. So now I have to decide. Ooh, I have to decide. No, I think, I think that I will twist it again versus leaving it untwisted. Uh, I really, really like where we are with this. And maybe, maybe I even want to, I'm like debating between wanting to twist it like tightly for the last one. Yeah, maybe we'll twist a little bit tighter. Uh, I feel like I don't, ooh, that's one. I feel like I don't need like a ton more color. Oh, I was gonna move the zip ties. Uh, whoops, you know what? When we get to the end, we will take a look at the zip ties and decide if I want to just place a little bit of color over there. Cause yeah, on this one, uh, there we go. It's like wanting to have some of that lighter color on the top, but they are sort of untwisting themselves a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna go get the yellow, the brilliant yellow. And this time I'm coming with 50 milliliters of our brilliant yellow. And then I'm sort of pouring up and down along the length. This dye and making sure, especially, except after what I said last time, especially to get the ends. So it's just 50 milliliters of that 1% stock solution in four cups of water with one tablespoon of white vinegar. And now I think the only thing I want to do a tiny bit is just like separate that a little bit. But now I am going to let this wait for 10 minutes. I'm going to ask for the yarn mop. I'm going to go ahead and steam set it for probably just 10, 15 minutes. So that way these colors are a bit set in place and it is then a fresh mop as we are doing the next times. Because yeah, somehow whenever I do something like this, there is spill, there are spills on the counter. And so we're creating this really, really fun yarn. And I'm very excited about this too. It has been 10 minutes and there's still a fair amount of yellow left in there. So I am going to go ahead and add three tablespoons of white vinegar. One of the reasons why this is absorbing a bit slower now is we have less surface area around. Um, if the yarn was more opened up, the dye would be able to go deeper beneath the surface. So we'll just continue to wait. After another 15 minutes, there's just a hint left. I want to see how this feels. Oh goody, there are still pinks in here. Oh goody. And see, I don't mind putting this in now. We'll check around the ties in a minute. If there's little bits of, oh, this is so cool. Um, they have bits of pink and then a lot of like orange and yellow. I think I almost wish that there was a little bit more pink. I think I went a lot heavier with both of the yellows than I did with the red and the peach, but oof. I mean, this feels so sunsetty. I am so, so happy. Uh, I'm curious to hear what you think and what you feel about how this colorway turned out. Now, there's a lot of times when I might not be happy with the white but there's not a lot of it and it goes with my like inspiration the clouds that are taking color and the lights and darks it works for me and it works here this time so i'm not going to stress about it and i think ah oh, goodness all right i'm gonna let this sit for 15 minutes and then we'll remove the yarn and take a closer look at it so then you know i can see if there's any modifications I want to make, but I'm really happy. And I am now seeing more of the pink now that it is opened back up. On camera, I think it might be a little hard right now though, because it's so steamy. All right. 
Uh, apologies for the, I don't know, lawnmower or something in the background. But I would say that we have some beautiful, beautiful sunsets here. I'm very excited to see how the different minis in a bundle will vary from one another. I think that that's gonna be really interesting. And one thing I'm doing right now is I just shifted it so that way the nylon zip ties would be out of the liquid, uh, which cools, they cool off quickly enough that then I can lift the yarn so I can set it aside to cool. And once it has cooled off completely, then we will go and wash it. But you can see that opening them up helped us absorb the rest of that yellow. And in the meantime, I'm going to set up to dye another round. As we dye another round of this colorway, I thought it would be helpful to chat a little bit about volume and when it really makes a difference for the volume that you use when you're applying dye to yarn. Volume makes a really big difference when you want your dye to be more spread out. If I took 100 milliliters of a 1% dye stock and just poured that directly in the pan, I wouldn't be able to spread it very far because that's not a lot of liquid and we would end up with some really concentrated color in a small area of yarn. By dissolving that 100 milliliters of the dye stock, that same one gram of dye that we have in four cups of water, I'm able to spread that same amount of color all over so we get lighter color but on more area. In either case, we use the same amount of dye, the exact same amount of dye. It's just the technique gives us the difference in what we see. So this kind of project is very much a case where now that I know the proportions and the recipe, I might, for example, go and measure out two grams of the peach blush acid dye and then dissolve it in a volume of water I don't care about to eventually dissolve that in I think six cups of water is what I ended up doing with that color. And so, yes, the volume at some point it does, at some point the difference between like six and eight cups isn't going to make a really huge deal in how it settles on, but it would make a big difference if it was only 200 milliliters. So I hope that this is helping frame how when there are times when you might want to use a really concentrated stock solution to apply your dye to the yarn to get small intense patches of color versus times when you want to use your dye and really dilute it and have a large volume of water to get something that is a lot softer overall. Of course, in our project today, we are both applying large volumes of water, but we're also taking advantage of resist by twisting the yarn here in the pan. And if our pan was more crowded, say we had 500 grams of yarn in the pan, then we would have even more resist because where the yarn is touching itself, it's harder for the dye to access. And these are all factors that you can play around with as you dye more and more yarn. This is a bath that just had uh, some of our official Hanukkah colorway and now I am coming in with our yarn mop and I'm not expecting things to spread off from it but why not put it in here since I also have a hot pan on the other side of the stove and now I am going to heat it for 20 minutes turn off the heat and wash it off camera but let's go wash the rest of our yarn let's wash this first batch I really, really am happy with the way these colors turn out. Um, even if, I think maybe I would have gone for something a little more pink than orange, but at the same time, I like where, what that did. So, but at the same time, I like what we've done. I just added, I think, yeah, some came out. <laughs> so clear, just so, probably a little much. Uh, I just finished dyeing up all the yarn, so I am a little tired. But yeah, I am not seeing any color come out, and that was a lot of soap. 
So I am going to have to rinse this a few times to get the soap out of the yarn, but then I'm gonna put it through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. I may or may not have been singing the sunrise sunset from Fiddler on the Roof as I was bringing out this yarn. And no, I am not going to make you listen to my singing voice. <laughs> I am really happy with how this sunset color turned out. It is a bit more on the orange side, but I like the warm pinks, the more like because they're not cool tone pinks. I love just all the warm tones that we have here and the way everything plays together. You know, I'm having trouble photographing this. I feel like it's hard for me to capture on camera the colors that I see, but I see bits of white and yellow and then a lot of redder orange and yellower orange tones on here. And I imagine that there will be differences because of where the skeins may have been within our twists as we were layering the colors. But what I really like is the softness that we have from this layering technique. We did have resist, which limited where the dye was able to access the yarn. But unlike a harsher resist from a zip tie, what we have are these very soft shifts of color and things feel very, very nicely blended. The big difference between this color where we used four colors and we applied it immersion on twisted skeins and the last night where we had three different colors that we layered on top of each other is that a lot of these color sections are smaller. They're smaller and they, there might be some more shifts and repeating in here. But of course there could be some skeins in here that if you lay it out next to one from Hanukkah night three, they might feel very, very similar. Uh, so it's just with this technique, I knew for sure that I was going to be able to maintain more hues. Yeah, there are going to be some skeins that have more yellow, some more pink. There will be these soft, subtle differences. But again, I'm very, very happy with this very, very golden sunset. Here are our two bonus skeins. One where we see the colors that we use tonight, plus a few others, but I sort of tested out to narrow down and pick the colors that we used. And I really do think that sometimes taking a look at the colors that you're interested in using and seeing how they are similar and different is a really nice way to start out, especially if you're on the fence of what colors you wanna use. And then we have this yarn mop, which is so, so soft and subtle. It's almost more like a cloudy sunset where you have those little pops of color. Uh, I really like it. I used to really try to have uh, a yarn mop on hand whenever I'm doing a powder technique because I always have lots of dye on my fingertips and it always felt like a shame to rinse that down the drain. But this time I was dealing with liquids and wiping up liquids that I was measuring and things like that and I really should do this more as well and really make an effort to just have something on hand to help wipe up whatever dye I have going on uh, because sometimes it might be a little softer and more subtle but still very beautiful. But now it's finally time for me to go twist all of these up which for me will take a little while but for you we'll see right now. I'm not gonna start singing Fiddler on the Roof, but it's still Sunrise Sunset is in my head. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm not, again, not subjecting you to my singing voice. <laughs> Sorry, I can't stop laughing. Um, but I love this golden glow, golden warmth of the sun, and oh, I really, really like how this turned out. I absolutely could have done a little bit less of some yellow orange uh, to try to keep it a little bit softer, but at the same time, this fiery glow is so beautiful and I really love it. I did a little bit of some separating out various, uh, dialogues are the wrong word, but variation between skeins. Uh, for this colorway and each pan 
had the exact same recipe, but the tightness of the twist could have varied. And also, since we're dealing with mini skeins, which minis were towards the center of the twist and had less exposure to the dye, at any of the points for any of the colors also could have come into play, which are why some feel more saturated, some feel more pastel, some are much more orange, some have more variation and multiple tones in there. But isn't this part of the beauty of a sunset in that they vary and the beautiful every time? Orange is not my favorite color, but this makes me so, I don't know, it feels like a hug. It makes me so happy. And orange is my eight-year-old's favorite color, so I think I have a newer appreciation for it. One thing I enjoy about the Hanukkah special is that not only am I playing with different techniques, but I'm also trying to play with different colors, different color combinations to create a variety. And it is fun, especially when I push myself outside of my color comfort zone. Because for a long time, I would realize I would come back from yarn shows and everything in my, everything that I bought would be in a very similar color palette because that's what I gravitate towards. So I get really, really happy when I create something I love so much that is not in my purple and teal uh, range that is my comfort zone. I have a bit of an easier time, I think, picking three colors to layer then I do four, especially when you consider how they're going to mix and blend and which colors will have much a much bigger impact on the final colorway than others. Uh, it's all something that you get better at as you learn and explore and challenge yourself. And the thing I'm most excited about today is that we still have something that feels very bright, fiery, alive um, versus and don't get me wrong, I love muted, saturated things. But sometimes when you mix colors together, then it starts to get deeper and deeper. And I didn't want to lose that feeling of light. And I think I was able to do that today. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you enjoyed our sunset colorway that we created by layering large volumes of dye on top of our yarn in four different steps. Please make sure that you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. This is honestly the biggest way that you can help support these videos. Subscribing, liking, turning on notifications. As my kids would say, smash that bell, but don't smash your devices. And if you're looking for other ways to help support the content, I do have a Patreon and I offer some really fun perks over there. Early access to the Dipot PS series and depending on the level, patrons can also get permanent Etsy coupons, behind the scenes sneak peeks and more. You can find more details at patreon.com slash cabinets. Stay tuned because tomorrow night is the fifth night of Hanukkah and we have another yarn dyeing video at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. So I will see you tomorrow and I cannot wait to show you the really fun colorway that I created. Thank you so much for watching.